Sri Krishna and his flute. It was a moonlit night. The whole atmosphere was presenting a blissful calmness. Sri Krishna decided to demonstrate the glory of his bliss with the aid of his yoga maya. He went to the nearby garden and began to play on his flute. The music was so enchanting and divine that the whole village was enraptured by it. The gopis of Raja were stunned on hearing it. They forgot whatever work they were doing. They could not see their husbands, parents, babies, cows or calves in front of them. They unconsciously ran to the presence of Sri Krishna. With their minds, they embraced the Lord. They felt that he was the Lord of their hearts. Thus, even in the end, by their intense love for the Supreme, they had burned down their mortal entanglements and got liberated. King Parikshit inquired, O sage, the gopis were intoxicated with love of a carnal nature. How did they get final liberation? Shuka replied, Sishupala got liberation through hatred. Out of hatred, he was constantly remembering the Lord. One can attain union with the Supreme through love, hatred, fear, affection, kinship or devotion. Sri Krishna welcomed the damsels with the delight and inquired of the welfare of the families of each one of them. He expressed great delight at the clear moonlit night and the blissful atmosphere. After some time, he said that it was getting late in the night and asked them to return home and attend to their duties. Their love for him could in no way diminish by the bodies being at a distance in Vraja and asked them not to forget their homes. The gopis protested, O Krishna, do not be so cruel as to drive us away. We have relinquished everything to serve you, the Lord. Can there be a duty which is more sacred than the service of the Supreme? Our legs fail to move away from you. We have come to serve you as your servants. Give us the chance for such service. Our souls are burning with the devotion for you. Please have the mercy to relieve our agony. Sri Krishna was much moved by their pleading and decided to make them enjoy the supreme bliss. He entered the hearts of all of them and manifested himself as Atma, Ra Atma Rama, the supreme, who forever revels in self-ecstasy in the hearts of the devotees. So the gopis enjoyed such a great bliss which they had never before enjoyed. They felt as if they had enjoyed the physical revelry with the Lord and were unconscious of the world. But very soon when their mind fell from the seat of the supreme bliss to the body consciousness and sense perceptions, the Lord disappeared from their hearts and they could not see his physical form either inside or outside. The gopis then began to search for Sri Krishna among the shrubs and plants and on the shady banks of Yamuna, a vain search in the outside for one that dwells in the hearts of every creature. While searching, they began to narrate in chorus songs one after another of the various divine deeds of Sri Krishna, the cowherd boy. After a severe search, the gopis were getting despair. The Lord took pity on them and appeared to them in his enchanting form at a distance and told them that they had slipped in their dhyana and so to make them established in better and undisturbed dhyana or meditation. He made himself scarce. What he did was out of his grace for them and so asked them to relinquish their lower thoughts and direct them always to the highest. This is only a practical pictorial description of dhyana or meditation wherein the mind dissolves in the self and supreme bliss is experienced. But the mind cannot remain in that joy for long except by long practice and so projects out 
on account of its previous vasanas for worldly experiences with objects and the bliss is lost there is regret